Hello everyone and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial on Vue. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to export your landscape out of Vue and import it into Cinema 4D. And then I have a little bit of a trick in store for you guys, something that will really make you guys happy, uh, for those who actually really care anyways, um, towards the end. So, here's Vue, and I created just a, a simple little a terrain here just to show you what we can do. And uh, it's a procedural terrain. And if I open this, it will just open up the uh, terrain editor. I like saying landscape because some people have said that I slur my R's in terrain and it doesn't sound very good. So I'm just going to say landscape and ed editor. And this is my landscape. It's uh, not, you know, it's, it's good. It's not bad. It's just, um, you know, a regular view. Um, or VU uh, landscape and you'll see that I increase the resolution here well I want to do that because when I export my my scene here or my landscape out of a, a view and import it into Cinema 4D Cinema 4D is gonna look at it as a standard terrain so I want as much detail quality as I can have uh, so I, I I took it up to 2048 because it can take quite a long time to export the landscape um, especially on slower computers. On mine it exported pretty quickly uh, but I have my computer computer built uh, to handle this kind of calculation rather quickly. So it didn't take very long, it took maybe uh, like a minute or less to export just the landscape but I also exported the material map that I have placed on the landscape. And so you're gonna want to raise the resolution to where you want it and then when you're done you just go to export terrain and then from here you just browse to where you want to export it and you can name it what you want and if you're using Cinema 4D you choose the Cinema 4D preset if you're using 3ds Max you use the 3ds Max preset so on and so forth you just choose whichever option you want to to use uh, for this one I'm using Cinema 4D so I exported it as Cinema 4D I'm not gonna do it again because I have already done that and here I generated the maps um, I made mine in the last one, the last export I did as PNG. Uh, it'll default the bump map here, or bitmap here. And then I just raised the uh, map resolution to the same as my terrain. After that, you can also, one more thing, you can also change the mesh resolution here. I just changed it all the way to high. And then you click OK, and then it'll uh, export your scene out, along with your maps. Uh, just a disclaimer here, if you are generating your maps, it does take a lot longer for Vue to export your uh, landscape with the maps. So if you have your landscape already textured and have all the materials you, you need, um, then you can export the maps. But think about it this way. Vu needs to export these maps at this resolution, so this is like rendering out a still image at 2048 by 2048. So a view has to go through and actually render out all those uh, images that you're exporting like the color map and the bump map. So if your computer is really slow at rendering um, still images you you may want to hold off on doing this and just use different texture maps from you know your own collection. Uh, but this is definitely something you can do and I recommend doing it if you can though that's just the disclaimer and that's what it's like. I'm not sure if that's exactly how it is but that's to me that's what it's like. View needs to actually render these two images out separately um, and then it has to export them so it can take a long time so I just wanted to let you guys know that. So like I said I already have it exported so just build your landscape here raise the, raise the resolution where you want it to be export it to uh, the format that you prefer and then you're done. That's all there is to it. You can put view down you can so there's the material that I have on there uh, and I'll show you that uh, it does work. So here is Cinema 4D, and here's the material that was rendered with it. Also, this is what it's going to look like. So I have the text files here. This is the bump map, the bump maps, and these are the color maps. And Cinema, if you export it Cinema 4D, it, it's probably the same thing with uh, 3ds Max. It'll automatically apply these texture maps and color maps to your material for Cinema 4D when you import 
or open that Cinema 4D file that you exported from view. So you don't have to do any manual work here. Uh, it's pretty easy, though you can. And the way you would do that is you go to Create New Material, and here's the new material. Just double click on that, and this is the material editor. It's super easy. Uh, this isn't a tutorial on Cinema 4D, but I will show you how to use this, just because it's really important if you uh, happen to have any issues importing your own textures. You just choose which ones you want here, so you just put a check mark in all the little boxes that you want. Color, obviously, just is the color texture. Um, then there's the bump, which is obviously just the bump texture. And then there's the normal maps. If you export normal maps, you can use those. There's the specular map, so on and so forth. And you just highlight whichever option you want to change, and it gives you all the settings that you can change. From here, you just load up under texture, you just load up your file, and you're good to go. That's how you would make a new material, and you do that for all of those different options. Any of these options that you know you have a texture for, you can load up a texture and be on your way. Thankfully, that is not the case here because Cinema 4D did it all for me automatically, so that's good. When you first import your scene, it might come in a little flat. Uh, you, your mountains might not be as tall, and it'll be just like a nice flat uh, object. The way you would change that is you use the scaling tool right here. So there's the scale tool. Make sure you have your landscape selected and you'll get these uh, little gizmos. And for me, and it might be for you, when I first try to change my scale of my terrain, it takes a little bit of a time, little bit of time for Cinema 4D to catch up. So I just gla grab the gizmo. This one will stretch it upwards, uh, and not outwards, but maybe just upwards. And when I click it and I drag up, you'll see that it disappears, and it takes a little bit for Cinema 4D to update. Just give it a little bit of time, and you'll get this option right here, where it actually scales up and down, um, and it gives you the percentage of what you're scaling it to. I scaled it up to about 600% and it came in to where I wanted it. So I'm just going to leave it where it's at now. And when you let go, it'll update. Just give it a little bit of time and it'll update. This won't take nearly as long if you have a lower resolution mesh, but I have a higher resolution mesh, so it, it takes a bit of time. The next thing that you can do is you can load in lights into your landscape, or you can just put in a sky. So the way you could do that is, I believe under here, if you click and hold where this uh, plane or floor object is, you have the sky object. And that'll put it in your scene. But it doesn't really do much good to just throw that in there because it's not really changing any anything. So if I go here to uh, render, and I'm just going to render a region, I'm going to get a little bit of terrain and a lot of sky. And I'll just let Cinema 4D prepare it. You can see it right there. It's preparing to render. And when it's done preparing, you'll start, you'll render out this area and you'll be able to see what's happening. And these little boxes right here indicate that it's rendering. And typically the boxes will go around in a circle like this and render out. Uh, but you can see the bump map's working because we get a nice bumpy material. And the color map is working because the, the color's coming in accurately. Uh, but there's no sky. There's nothing here. Well, you have to make a material for the sky. So you can create new material and right there under mat is where you're going to want to double click and load up a material for your sky so I already have one here and we want to not check color don't check specular but do check luminance and in the luminance is where you're going to want to load that texture and what you can use is uh, an HDRI image, which is just a high dy dynamic range image, and it can be the actual HDRI format. I have a JPEG one here. Recommended using H the actual HDRI um, format. I believe Cinema 4D supports the .exr format as well in the .float format, but I could be wrong on that. But I just have a JPEG right here, and this will do just fine, hopefully. And you'll see here that it loads in that sky map or that HDRI image. And um, there are some settings here that I'm not going to talk about right now, but we can go ahead and just close that out. Take this material and assign it to the sky, and you can just click it and drag. Click, hold, drag, drop on the sky, and you'll see that it updates here. Now, this should, in theory, provide all the data you need to um, 
uh, render out your scene <clears throat> with all the light data you, you, you possibly need. So I'm going to go ahead and hit render and I'm going to render a region again. And I'm just going to do this region and we'll see how it looks. Now this is in theory because I haven't used an, a JPEG image for my sky to um, pretty much light up my scene so this could not work out for me so I guess we'll find out. Um, and like I said it's you know I, could, I have the actual texture there but I'm not getting any of the luminance uh, options it's not actually illuminating my scene it doesn't look bad but it's not necessarily doing it so I might be missing an option here so if we use the sunlight here that's not going to do the same thing uh, we need to actually illuminate our scene the way it should look so I'm, I'm thinking that the JPEG file isn't necessarily working uh, and it needs to be a .hdri image so I'll, I'll show you why I got confused here why it would work here and not in the little tidbit that I have at the end for you um, and that's because it works in that little tidbit it accurately illuminates the scene as well as the shadows but it just doesn't do it in Cinema 4D so here I'm going to get a different image I'm going to actually get a HDRI image to implement in here and so I loaded one up just right here from your uh, Windows Explorer window you can actually grab content so like what I have right here here's my HDRI image I just dragged it and dropped it right inside of the uh, uh, material layer thing there thing is a perfect word um, and then it'll just import it into Cinema 4D so that's all you have to do so I'm going to go ahead and delete this material and I'm just going to assign this one to the sky and there we go now the next thing we have to do is there's a little bit of data here that is working with the uh, with the scene but we really want to make sure that we have global illumination set up so if you go to render and then um, where is it at um, render settings effect and then under a global illumination just make sure that's in there and then checked I'm just gonna keep the defaults for now we'll probably come back to this and talk about them later uh, but now that we actually have an HDR I image in there with the actual .hdr extension a proper HDR I file um, we should be able to get a pretty decent looking image I'm not sure about this file I have never used it um, so it might not be the best looking HDRI image, but we can definitely try it out. So I'm going to go ahead and render. I'm just going to render view. It's a rather large window, but I'm going to do it anyways, just so we can see a good extent of it. And uh, Cinema 4D actually renders out pretty quickly for the most part. Uh, a, a lot faster than view, but view does. Uh, view is going through all those little calculations, uh, like the infinite calculations for the fractal and everything so there is a cutoff point for detail with Cinema 4D whereas with view there really isn't you limit it yourself so don't think for a second that view is a, a bad renderer because it's not uh, it's just you know has more calculation to do and now you can really see that our landscape that we imported from view is definitely getting uh, lit by this HDRI image. However, it's really dark because uh, it's just a dark HDRI image. Uh, but now you can really see the detail in the bump. Uh, maybe not so much the color, but there are these little uh, lighter and darker areas of the texture that I exported. So it, it looks, overall, it looks pretty decent. Uh, we can play with the HDRI image if we want. It's not necessarily something that we have to do right now just because you know, we're playing around with something else here. Um, but if you use view extreme you don't have to use an HDRI image you don't even have to use uh, a sky you can just delete that and in here you can actually load up an atmosphere with the view extreme plugin so it when you use view related objects inside cinema 4d it does render out inside of view so cinema 4d objects get rendered out in c4d and view objects get rendered out in view I believe that's how it works so here we can actually load up, you know, I'm going to load an atmosphere, one that I already created, and I'll just use this one, for instance. And right here it's just asking me if I want to restore these preferences based on my settings. I'm just going to say yes, restore them afterwards, and this is going to ask you if you want to go see 
uh, how to set up a proper exposure, I'm going to say no, because if I click yes, it's going to open up a Windows or Internet window, and I don't want to do that. You can really see the detail in the train right here inside Cinema 4D, so it actually looks really good. So now if I render out this view, I might have to play with the settings a bit. I can create my own atmosphere if I wanted. Uh, I just loaded a preset, one of my own. So we'll see how this is uh, illuminated and how it looks, and we'll just do an entire render. This might take a little bit longer because now we're having to include view on the render. So we'll find out. This will be a good test. All right, it's complete, and this is what we end up with. So the material itself is um, rather low resolution. Um, it's not. It's actually a really large resolution, though 2048 by 2048 in terms of CGI can be a bit small on an entire terrain like this. So it does, depending on how you want your texture to look, it really depends on how large of a uh, resolution you export it at. So 2048 may not be the best for close-up renders, maybe further away, but now you can really see where views, uh, 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 fractals come in to give you all that detail that you need, even close up or even further away. So Cinema 4D does you know, it handles uh, these large scenes rather well that you export from view. Uh, and it rendered this out relatively quick after it did all the, the irradiance uh, caching and everything like that. So not bad, not bad. I like it. Uh, there is a use for it. And I have used Cinema 4D with view scenes before. So this is just the landscape. Uh, in another video, I'll cover an actual entire scene. Uh, but for now, this is just the landscape. So you saw two ways you can light up your view your view scene or your landscape uh, using HDRI or even if you're using Extreme, the plugin for you know you can load up different atmospheres, um, and that works out really well. But I actually have another way you can render out um, view landscape. So say you built this really awesome landscape inside of View, and it's taking like 20 minutes just to render out. Um, you know, like a preview because it's just really awesome. Well, I took this same landscape and I have what's called Indigo Renderer, and it's just one of many GPU renderers uh, inside or that's available uh, for you to use. And this is just one that works with Cinema 4D, and it's pretty awesome. So <clears throat> I have it right here, and this is the same scene using uh, just another. This is the JPEG. HDRI that I was using, and you can see it right here, and you can see that inside of uh, uh, Indigo Renderer, it actually took the illumination uh, and actually properly illuminated the scene, and we have the coloring, we have the bump map, everything is right here, and it only took a minute to render out, and I got this final quality, uh, pretty much final quality render. I mean, granted, it is just one scene, uh, it's just a landscape. And there are some flaws to doing this, and I'll get into those in a later video. But <clears throat> you can see all the samples per pixel right here, and then the samples per second right here. And the time it took to render out was just one minute. And I, I ran this for one minute, and this is what I got. It was awesome. And the way, and the reason why it's not taking forever to render out an image because it's actually using the GPU in your computer rather than your CPU, and that just makes total sense. I mean, why, why are we, I mean, I, I understand the differences between CPU and GPU renderers, uh, but with how much they've actually caught up, GPU renderers are relatively decent. <clears throat> so I, you can use the environment map, which is pretty much just the HDRI image, but they also have the sun and sky right here, which is its own built-in sun and sky, uh, <clears throat> what's it called, uh, emulator. And I will just start this render over again. So I'll stop and I'll just hit render again. And it does take a little bit of time for it to build the scene. Uh, not not as long as it takes to do the pre-pass inside of view on you know high settings. Uh, it does take a couple seconds, a uh, couple seconds to a minute, depending on your computer and how fast it can build the scene. But once it starts and it's done building the scene, it just flies, especially if you have it set to use your GPU. 
So I'll just let it build the scene, and then uh, I'll come back when it starts actually rendering. Oh, never mind. So now it's starting to render. So you can see it took about maybe 30 seconds to 45 seconds or something like that. Um, and right here you can see the time elapsed and the samples will start kicking in here in just a minute once it gathers all the data it needs. <clears throat> and I'll let this run for a minute again as well. And you can just start seeing just how quickly it renders out. And I'm rendering out at a rather small resolution. It's not very large at all. So uh, and here you can see the uh, just immediately and this is 30 seconds in it already looks really good um, so there's shadowing global illumination and everything you need in this scene and it looks freaking amazing so I highly recommend that you pick up a uh, GPU renderer maybe just a trial or something that will work with uh, Cinema 4D or 3ds Max or maybe your favorite render engine and try rendering out your landscapes inside of those um, and to see what results you get. Obviously the texture map resolution is going to be a hindrance so rendering these out not inside of you will either make or break your scene so be be wary that's a disclaimer. These, this is a rather low resolution map to what I should have is what I'm trying to say. And I, let, I let that render out for a minute and you can see how many samples it already uh, went through per pixel and per second and this is pretty much a final quality render. I can get other objects, place them inside the scene in Cinema 4D and export that out into Indigo Renderer and they will be in here just like I had them set up in Cinema 4D. So the way you do that is you have to download Indigo Renderer obviously uh, and it's a plugin and it's right here and uh, you just render with Indigo and it'll automatically open up the Indigo Renderer um, studio here and it'll automatically start rendering your scene but if you want it to use your CPU let it continue going but if you don't you just hit stop come over to your render settings use the drop down right here and have it and check enable GPU acceleration and then right here I'm using OpenCL because I have AMD cards but this works with AMD cards and it works with Nvidia cards uh, right now the version that I'm using is not compatible with both of my GPUs because I have two of them uh, but uh, you can see I it can use my processor or one of my graphics cards right now Indigo 4 will have the ability to use uh, as many GPUs as you have in there and I they said two you can use up to two but I think they're working on actually getting it so you can use as many as you have which would be ideal I have two, so in the new one that will be launching hopefully soon, I'll be able to use both. Uh, now Indigo Render is, I would say it's a smaller render compared to other uh, uh, GPU render applications out there. So there's one by Otoy. Uh, Otoy makes a really good one called Octane Render, which they are actually implementing OpenCL support now so I'll be able to use that with my AMD card so maybe I'll go back to them because I, I purchased it a long time ago and and I loved it it was awesome but I switched AMD from Nvidia and I couldn't use it anymore that's why I have Indigo uh, but they're implementing OpenCL and they can use both GPUs already with this new update coming out it's not out yet but it's coming uh, so there's that fast speedy render with my landscape I love the way it looks uh, I can add a few more things here and there and make it look really sweet. Uh, but that pretty much concludes the tutorial here. I just kind of want to recap what I did so uh, so you can you know understand a little bit more fully. I just created my terrain inside of view. I kept it as a procedural landscape and I just raised the resolution of my landscape to the resolution that I needed it to be at. So if I knew I needed a 512 by 512 resolution landscape I would just increase or decrease this to what I needed to. And then I exported it using the export option here, changed it to where I wanted to export it to, made sure I set it at the preset I want. You can even do OBJ if you wanted, but I did Cinema 4D. And I also generated the maps, which look good, not great, but they're better than nothing. You don't have to do this, but you can. I just made sure that I had this slider all the way up to high and uh, exported it. And then inside of Cinema 4D, you can either double click the exported file from view or you can just come into Cinema 4D file open and open it from there right here and it should automatically load 
Then you have to deal with the scaling issue, which hopefully you remember how you'll do that. You just use the scaling tool here and make sure that your landscape is selected and use these gizmos. And uh, that's it. And then we just kind of went over the lighting options that you have. So you can either use the sky option or you can actually use the view option right here where you can load an atmosphere uh, or even create an atmosphere if you wanted using the atmosphere editor. And it's just the same thing. I don't want to go over this because, I mean, if you've been using view, then you know exactly how this works. So there's that. And they even have the photometric option right here. So if you wanted to use the photometric spectral option, you definitely could, or you can just use standard. And uh, yeah, you just do exactly what you want. You can load in the clouds. Pretty cool. Thank you for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Share if you would like to your friends. Uh, and uh, we hope to see you again soon at the next video. Also, one more thing. Visit www.pwndesign.com. Thank you. Bye.